a tremendous amount of what you might regard as shadow integration, which in the parlance of behavioral psychologists would be something like assertiveness training, right? It's training in how to stand up for yourself and, and for your, let's say for your better self, which would be the self that you could use productively over a medium to long period of time that would be of use to you, but also of use to people around you. So it's a self that's bounded by the necessity of taking care of yourself, but also simultaneously taking care of the people around you. Um, I, I think that the simplest way to start that work is to consult your resentment. You know, it's easy to become bitter about life and to become angry because, of course, life is difficult and it's full of disappointments and people are also subject to betrayal on the part of themselves and on the part of people that hypothetically care for them. And so it's easy to get bitter and to be resentful. And resentment is a very useful emotion, even though I think it's one of the most uh, damaging emotions if it's not dealt with properly. So if you're resentful, it basically means only one of two things. It either means you should grow up and quit whining and get on with your life, or it means that you're being subject to tyrannical forces of one form or another, maybe emanating from you, maybe a consequence of the natural environment, maybe a consequence of society. You're being subject to tyrannical forces and you're not uh, putting your own best interests forward, like in that broader sense that I described. And I don't mean your selfish, narrow interests that only serve the purposes of instantaneous gratification. I mean, your own best interests in terms of developing your character over the span of your life. If you're resentful, it either means that you're immature and that you should grow the hell up. And so you need to figure out how much of your resentment is 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 that and, and, and maybe allied with the desire to find other things or people to blame. But the other possible option is that you have something to say or do, right? Because you're in a situation where you're violating your own internal ethical standards and you're being required, pressured, let's say, to say things you don't believe or to do things that you believe to be wrong. And you need to determine, you need to start to strategize and plan how you can rectify that so that you can say what you mean. Like if you're negotiating with a marital partner, for example, and there are um, issues in your marriage that aren't making you happy, well, the first thing is you have to take note of that, right? To see that you're actually unhappy. Uh, the second is that you have to be willing to engage in a certain amount of conflict because in order to sort out what's disturbing you, you're going to have to lay your concerns out on the table and say, well, look, this is bothering me. You don't have to say, well, I'm right and you're wrong and you have to fix this. You have to say, well, I've noticed that this pattern of interaction or lack of interaction, say, in our relationship is making me resentful and angry. And the danger of that, of course, is you're gonna take it out on yourself and your partner. The danger is passion, passive aggressiveness. You know, you're not gonna to respond to your partner positively when they do something good if you're resentful about them. And you're not gonna to respond to yourself properly. And so you have to lay it out on the table, but sort of in a spirit of ignorant humility. It's like, look, I'm frustrated, I'm feeling this way about our relationship. Here's what I think might be going wrong, maybe on my part and maybe on your part. And here's what I envision as a possible solution. That's also really necessary if you're going to say what you have to say, which is to manifest yourself properly in the world is you can't just complain about what's wrong. You have to think, well, what would my minimal preconditions for satisfaction be? You have to offer that to the person that you're negotiating with. And so then you learn to abide by the truth to the degree that you can do that. And no one does it perfectly, you know, but it, it's very useful because you're not storing up a, a whole sequence of memories about how you were unfairly treated and abused and betrayed. Instead, you're trying to stay on top of it and to note your unhappiness and dissatisfaction when it manifests itself and to accept that that's the case and then to analyze that to see if it's your problem like i said with regards to maturity or if it indicates that there's an injustice in the manner in which you, 
you and the world are interacting and then to work to set that right even in small ways and so it's it's a matter of character logical development and that makes you that makes you stronger over time and partly what you need you know in order to do that is you have to really understand and we do this this is why we built in the future authoring program we built this section where you have to outline your most dismal future right what your future would be like if you let all your bad habits and character logical weaknesses have the upper hand and the reason we did this is because you can't be uh you can't straighten yourself out merely as a consequence of hope let's say you lay out a vision for the future and you think about what your life would be what you'd like your life to be like and then that makes you hopeful and it motivates you because it gives you something worthwhile and higher order to work for right and that's useful that's positive emotion working for you because positive emotion is experienced in relationship to goals but it's not not as useful as also being chased by something you're terrified by and if you have a good sense of how you'd fall apart if you stayed weak and just exactly what kind of hell that would be then when you determine to do something like to tell the truth and to say what you think and to not do things that you hate then you're going to be pulled along by the purpose that your vision has provided for you but also pushed along by your desire to avoid the worst forms of hell that you've already outlined for yourself personally and that can also help you be brave enough to stand up in a situation that would re would require conflict because if you have something to say and you have something to negotiate about with someone then there's going to be a certain amount of conflictual dialogue um that accompanies that right it, it to to lay out a set of problems and to describe the fact forthrightly that those problems characterize a relationship and then to seek for solutions is quite stressful in the short term and it's really easy to avoid and so people avoid it all the time and then they store up grievances across the span of the relationships and eventually the grievances mount to the point where they return in monstrous form and just eat everything up that's where you get divorces or that's where you explode at your boss and end up fired or that's where you you know you develop high blood pressure over 15 years because you can't stand all the accumulated uh uh mons all the accumulated monsters in your closet and then you drink yourself into oblivion because you can't stand your life that's all you know very counterproductive but it's easy to avoid that necessary conflict on a moment to moment basis because it's very stressful to speak forthrightly about genuine conflicts especially when you're dealing with important parts of your life but otherwise you don't straighten them out and then you have to carry all that forward so you need to be terrified of the consequences of not speaking your peace the more radical the necessary change the more pain that accompanies it like the more opportunity as well but and a lot of what we learn we learn painfully and so it's not surprising that people shrink away from learning we learn in pain and anxiety very frequently everyone knows that it's like the things that really that you really learned in life it's like it was no joy man like it took you out and so the fact that people flee from that is hardly surprising but it doesn't help that's the thing it just stores up the catastrophe for later and so the better the better idea is to eat a little poison every day so that you don't have to overdose in a month it's something like that and it is the case that I think because you don't you aren't forced to first of all you don't learn unless you're forced to learn. I know there's alternatives to that. There's the voluntary search for knowledge and and that's a fine thing and that is an antidote to this. But apart from that, speaking more practically, you tend not to learn unless you're forced to learn and it's and what you tend to learn by force are difficult lessons.